but I am very glad to introduce Dr. Shashang Dushi. He is my close friend last 25 years together and uh, I know that at present we are concerned that transmissibility and partial resistance to vaccine induced immunity. So it is rapidly transmitted. R0 is unknown. It has replaced Delta very quick, very fast worldwide. It is more transmissible. It has probably a breakthrough which is common with immune escape. Severity and virulence is unknown but very clear it is less severe and early trends are that it is less virulent and probably a mild disease. But from an Indian standpoint we want to save every life. And in India, we know the COVID score which I wrote in May 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. Age more than 55, male gender, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, chronic kidney or liver disease, any congenital acquired immunodeficiency, steroid immunosuppression or transplant, all of them confer a risk. And we have a very high insulin resistance and a cardiometabolic burden which kills, which is why we need to be very careful. It is these comorbidities which increase the risk of hospitalization with asthma, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, chronic kidney disease or many of these conditions. So when we see a patient with COVID today, essentially we have these subtypes. Unvaccinated without any past COVID, which is called naive infection. Then we have breakthrough, which means partial or total vaccination or an extra dose. Then we have reinfection, which means past COVID-19. Or we could have a combination of breakthrough and reinfection both. Typically, COVID has a flu-like syndrome in most people in the early delta wave. Then, of course, the second stage is pulmonary phase, where there is shortness of breath, and then, of course, there is a hyperimmune, hyperinflammatory response. So, typically, we had febrile illness, upper respiratory symptoms, cough, cold, sore throat. 80% in the first wave, the 14% had severe symptoms going to the lungs. So, we had a nose throat, throat COVID, lung COVID, and then, of course all over the body. But in the Omicron timetable, 95% are syndromic and symptomatic. 4% might go to the lung, that's very rare, very, very unusual, and only 1% may have severe disease. So in this current flu-like syndrome, particularly in the winter season, Delta, there is dry cough. Omicron, there is cough, but it could be productive. Flu, there is dry cough. Cold, you know, you will see common cold. It is common to have a little bit of mild cough. Raninese is seen in both Delta and Omicron, sometimes in flu and of course in common cold. Sneezing is common in Omicron and cold both. Sore throat and bad throat and painful throat is very similar to with Omicron, but can be also seen in Delta, flu and cold. Shortness of breath is similar to with Delta. Fever can be low grade or high grade both in Omicron, while it is common in Delta and flu, cold it may be very short duration. 
Night sweats occasionally are seen with Omicron, which are not seen with Delta flu and cold. Chills are common in Delta and flu, not so common in Omicron and cold. Headache is common and backache is very common in Omicron, but it can also be seen in flu and Delta. Loss of smell and taste is typical of Delta, rarely can be seen in Omicron or usually not seen. And in flu and cold, it is definitely not seen. Fatigue is very, very common in myalgia, severe <coughs> myalgia with Omicron can be occasionally seen with Delta, flu and cold. And the symptoms take around 4 to 5 days in Delta, Omicron it could be 1, 2 or 3 days. Flu it is probably 2 days and cold it is 2 to 3 days. So typically when we see allergic airway disease and SARS-CoV-2, in the eyes we see typically in allergens you get red watery itchy eyes, while in SARS-CoV-2 we will get conjunctivitis. In the ear we will get itchy and buzzy ear, while in SARS-CoV-2 we will get a little bit of dizziness. In the nose and mouth, you will see runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, palate and throat. And sometimes you might get cough and wheezing. While in SARS-CoV-2 or COVID, you will get loss of smell and taste, sometimes sore throat or bad sore throat in Omicron, fever, dry cough, shortness of breath and fatigue. And clearly it is very important to distinguish allergic rhinitis, COVID and influenza. Cough, headache, fatigue, sore throat, nasal obstruction, rhinorrhea is common to all. Fever, chills, muscle, body ache, shortness of breath, acute loss of sense and smell, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea is more common in COVID and influenza and sneezing and itchiness is more common in allergic rhinitis. Ultimately, how the virus response depends on how good are our immunity is, how adaptive our immune response is, we, whether we are clearing the virus quick and fast or we are deteriorating. And we have the NLP3, which means when SARS-CoV viroporins enter, there is a lysosomal disruption, the Golgi membranes are disrupted and the inflasome of NLP3 is activated and you get cellular uh, release of cytokines. Also it is very crucial to understand prostaglandin, CNF alpha, IL-6 is very very crucial in the pathogenesis of the symptomatology and syndromic diagnosis of COVID-19 as illustrated in this diagram. So typically most people have a normal post-survival, non-lethal infection, immune recognition, immune recruitment and resolution with a good immune response and return to homeostasis with clearness. Rarely we will get immune evasion, delayed or inadequate immune response, a lot of cytokine storm and probably death and sepsis. So it is how fast our virus is recognized by various ligands and how quick the local tissues fight that viral response. And this could be a fast innate response or it could be a slow antibody response as has been illustrated here. So clearly in SARS-CoV-2 we have IL-2, IL-4 which is the adaptive immunity which is good. We have anti-inflammatory cytokines like IL-10 and the bad pro-inflammatory cytokines and interleukins like interferon, gamma, the IL-1, IL-6, IL-17 and pnf alpha. And this is how the immunopathology of COVID unfolds. Lymphopenia, T cell activation, lymphocyte dysfunction, granulocytes and macrophages are abnormal, cytokines are produced and antibodies are increased and that's what Dr. Lalwani has beautifully told us about the T cell goal. And then of course you can get a cytokine storm, you can get lung injury and death. So typically we are definitely seeing this and we are in the era of evidence-based medicine to do a simple CBC with RDW and lutopid to lymphocyte ratio with CRP, we can easily pick up the early nose and throat COVID and information. To do a D-dimer ferritin LDH, it is useful with IL-6, but a CBC with the RDW more than 14.5, we are likely to progress with a increasing CBC. COVID-7, vital 7 monitoring is the key in COVID management. If your temperature is persistently above 100, you need anti-inflammatory stroke a antipyretic drug, if it is persistent tachycardia, persistent respiratory rate which is high, blood pressure or glucose which is high, you might need admission. The COVID stethoscope is pulse oximeter, where you see the oxygen saturation, if it is below 93% or after a 6 minute walk test, it is below 3% drop, then again we need to red flag the patient and keep connected with the patient. Take the pulse oximetry reading properly. After resting without a mask, without talking for a few minutes in the middle of your finger, remove the nail polish and warm the ex, uh, you know, cold extremities and wait for 60 seconds. Typically, the therapy is all symptomatic and syndromic in the current space. And this is what Dome of India has come out 
that you can easily manage most people at home by for the simple flu like syndrome and if there are elderly people about 60 with comorbidities you might sometimes or even a compromised state you might put them in the hospital so isolate in a good ventilated room use a proper mask ensure the caregiver is taken care of take rest and hydration follow respiratory etiquette maintain a good hygiene do not share your personal hygiene items and share and monitor saturation levels most important is be tele connected with your doctor continue medicines for comorbidities follow symptomatic management of fever number 1 running nose and cough so for running nose take an antihistamine of your choice a fever antipyretic or anti inflammatory medicine and for cough perform warm water gargles or steam inhalation try to see that antibiotics are properly taken don't get misled by information through social media and don't self medicate do blood tests or radiological tests without letting a doctor and do not misuse steroids at all they can be deleterious in home so obviously that is what we need to do and ensure that the bio safety guidelines and covid appropriate behavior is done very very carefully who should we admit if somebody has difficulty in breathing persistent fever for more than 3 days above 100 deep in saturation less than 93% or uh, you know uh, respiratory rate is more than 24 persistent pain in chest or uh, persistent pain mental confusion or inability to arouse severe fatigue or myalgia you should straight admit the patient and not think twice and of course we can discharge them early in omicron world and rotate them there is a role for inhaled budesonide or a steroid if there is persistent cough more than 3 to 5 days but there is a lot of caution allergy can be easily treated with antihistamines and there is a lot of allergy and allergen avoidance in there and we basically need to ensure that we attack inflammation we down regulate the nf kappa beta very quickly and fast and we also know that people whether it is covid delta covid omicron there is a risk of thrombotic disorders because whenever there are respiratory symptoms thromboembolism goes up it's a thrombo inflammatory stage and therefore there is a definite need to understand that there is a complement activation thrombotic activation people at risk should be red flagged it's very important if you have cardio diabetes obesity chronic kidney disease immunocompromised state transplant patients copd obesity elderly they are at risk for death you can score them solid organ transplants blood cancer patient dialysis immunosuppressive immunodeficiency need more therapy so we must find out who is at risk to die sometimes we can give them this monoclonal antibodies some of them work in omicron some of them in delta like the sorotomimab or the keselumab and ipimab and they are useful only in those very very high risk categories but the disease is most transmissible in the first five days of symptoms and therefore we need to try to treat them symptomatically as early as possible we have some modern age drugs like say an antiviral which are not available in india like nirmatavir or ritonavir or molnupiravir but they have their own limitations and most of the patients about 60 below 60 do not need these drugs at all because they cannot be given in pregnancy they cannot be given in, in lactation and have select use in that monoclonal antibody molnupiravir or the nirmatavir ritonavir combinations can reduce it should be only used in high risk population are expensive reduce the hospitalization only by maybe 7% 3% or 6% and that is where they stand but they have some role i don't say that they don't have any role and this is how the covid space looks like but main treatment in omicron world is not hospitalized symptomatic patients need a syndrome based care so somebody is asymptomatic with comorbidities or no comorbidities you just need to observe them somebody is symptomatic with gout fever with rhinitis and cough again symptomatic treatment. if you have symptoms with fever again symptomatic treatment sometimes you can use an antiviral above 60 with more than two comorbidities that's the protocol and of course you should know when to admit when not to admit that's the key so fundamentally what we are trying to do the modern protocol with covid is fundamentally symptom based management it is all boiling down to managing the nose covid the throat covid appropriately and correctly managing the little bit of sneezing the nasal congestion the sore throat as well as a symptom based relief apart from cough and fever so obviously we are trying to get newer and newer targets either through cellular signaling through viral dependent rna polymerase antivirals vaccines modulation of immune therapy gene therapy 
and even nutraceutical supplementation. So all of them make a part of the integral health. What are we today? As we talk today in COVID, we want zero COVID deaths. We want no severe disease. COVID treatment is all symptomatic and syndrome based. It's a mild manageable endemic disease. And probably Omicron is a chain breaker in that direction. So when we talk in January 2020, we need to be responsible. We know COVID is predictably unpredictable. We need to save lives. But Omicron treatment, as of today, is a symptom-based syndromic approach, apart from ensuring that we red flag those high-risk individuals. Most of the patients can be managed at home by good symptomatic management. And that's all it takes to conquer this illness. Thank you for patient care.